Welcome back to video 4 for Topic 8 Programming and this time we're going to be looking at functions and procedures. This is for the IGCSE and O level in computer science. So as you can see here we need to understand what is meant by procedures, functions and parameters. We need to define and use procedures and functions with or without parameters and we need to understand and use local and global variables. Okay, so let's get started. What's the difference? Procedures and functions. When writing an algorithm, it is common to encounter multiple tasks that involve the execution of the same set of statements, so the same piece of code over and over again. To avoid repeating the same code multiple times, and to make the code more organized and efficient, programming languages provide the concept of subroutines, also known as procedures or functions. These are blocks of code that are defined only once and can be reused throughout the program by calling them by their assigned name. By using procedures and functions, the code becomes more readable, maintainable, and less error prone. What are the differences? Procedures and functions are both groups of programming statements that can be called by a specific name to perform a certain task. The main difference between the two is that the procedure does not return a value while a function does. A parameter is a variable that stores the value of an argument pass that to a procedure or function. Not all procedures and functions require parameters, but those that do will have specific parameters that must be included in the call to the procedure or function in order for it to work correctly. So we'll go into this in a lot more detail. Um, defining procedures and functions in our code. So here we've got some um, pseudocode and the procedure is um, has been given the name star banner and it's going to output um, a series of stars. Okay, a string of stars, and then it's going to end the procedure. So in this pseudocode example, we sandwich our program inside a procedure. We give the procedure a name, star banner, insert the code, and end the procedure. We can call and use the procedure many times throughout the program. I've got two procedures, or two functions, yeah, in Python code. I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so let's have a look at this in Python. Define star banner. Okay, and define star banner 2. Now star banner 2 features a little for loop for iron range 3 and define star banner Yeah, has got three lines of stars and now I'm going to call them at the end. Okay, pretend this is one massive program. I can call these wherever I want within that particular program. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay, and there we go. So we've got three lines close together and then we've got a big non-breaking space okay here a big space times three and then I've created a loop here so I've got one line and then we've got a space another line then we've got space and then a third one and a space you see under here so I've created my little for loop here and I've printed three lines up here using this now for the next section it's sometimes useful to add a value to a procedure that can be used to modify the actions. So this time we've got a number, an integer for the procedure stars. So by amending the previous example, we can decide how many stars would be outputted by adding a parameter. Okay, so let's have a look at that in Python and see what I'm talking about. Okay, for the second program, I'm defining a function called stars and inside here, I've, um, I've, got a, I've got a number, and this is set to as, to as being an integer. I've got a little for loop for counter in range 1 to the number here, plus 1. Okay, and it's going to print this many stars. Now, I've set the stars, so I'm going to call this function here, but I've, I've set inside the number 10 I based on this integer. So when I run this, it's going to print out this row of stars. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, five six seven eight nine ten okay it's going to print out ten times i'll say okay so i can do some magical things with that to make things go over and over again so let's say if i set this to 40 okay and i run it again and there you go it's going to print out a lot more stars when we move on to functions, a function is basically the same as a procedure and acts as a set of instructions or a recipe that you can use over and over again in a computer program. The difference is it always returns a value. It is defined just once but can be used many, many times, just like a procedure. 
Some languages call them different names, like in Python, they're called fruitful functions. Also, unlike other instructions, the output of a function can be used in other parts of the program. So here we've got function, calculate the area, and brackets length, area equals length times length. Okay, interesting, return the area and the function. So let's have a look at this in Python and see what I'm talking about in terms of this here. Okay, for this example, I've had a little bit more to get it to work and show you. So yeah, we define a function called calculate area and in there I've set length. Now length is gonna be area equals length times length. So length is obviously something I need to type in and I'm gonna return the area for this function. So length equals float input, enter the length and size, and print the area of the square, because it's obviously length times length, which is going to be the same for a square, and we're going to calculate the area length. So let's get this running and see what happens. So run the module. Let's type in 20. So the area of the square is 400. Okay. Now, of course, we can do this many different ways, but the nice thing about this is I am declaring a function up here, but outside of this function, I'm calling it from within a print statement. As you can see here okay i have written a little calculator program here that does two different things it's basically got a menu and it says welcome to the calculator program and we've got addition and subtraction which the um, a user chooses which one they want to do and then we've got uh, two variables number one and number two which are base which are two numbers that a user inputs and this is in a, a main program I've, I've defined a function called main Okay, and all this runs inside here. But what I've got, if choice equals one, if somebody types in one, then it's going to add number one and number two together, these two uh, variables. Else, somebody types in two, it's going to subtract the two variables from each other. Otherwise, it's going to do an invalid choice. Now, the beauty of this program is, and I'm going to run this to show you, um, enter a number, I'm going to subtract. I'm going to subtract 78 first number and 34 for the second number and it's going to give me a result great okay so I've got a menu system and I'm using these two um, defining add and defining subtract what I could do and this is the beauty of the main program if I wanted to put another program in here let's say I wanted to define a little program here define define cylinder volume again using values a and b and using pi as a, as a constant rather than importing a library, which we'll come to later, and I've got a calculation here. I could put another value in here, and I could just change this main program here. So I could put print, um, find the volume of A and B, and then I could put another little else statement in here. So it wouldn't take a lot of working to change it quite quickly, and I can remove things, I can take things out. So I'm basically almost like creating boltons that I can add to and remove quite easily. Sort of separate entities, all these little defining functions that I can use inside another function or I can declare it at the very end, such as this one called main. But I'll leave you with that and see what you think. In another example, I've got a function here called Celsius, um, which stores um, a real number, a real value for temperature. And it returns a real value, but it returns, because we're doing a little bit of um, a little bit of changing, temperature minus 32 divided by 1.8. What do you think this is gonna do? Well, here a function is written in pseudocode to convert a temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Because a function returns a value, it can be called by assigning the return value directly into the variable, like this here. And I'm gonna show you this in Python so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this one is a little bit strange. I've defined a function called Celsius, and inside it I've put temperature. Okay, but I'm going to return, when I run this, it's going to return temperature, whatever I put in here, minus 32, okay, divided by 1.8. So it's going to be turning um, Fahrenheit into Celsius. Okay, so I've got a variable here, my temp equals the float variable. Okay, so it's decimal points. Enter the temperature in Fahrenheit. My temp equals Celsius, the function Celsius, along with my temp. Okay, so it's going to be doing this calculation on my temp, the float input. And then we're going to print temperature in Celsius is my temp. So let's run this and see what happens. And as you can see here, if I put in temperature in Fahrenheit 100, 
the temperature in Celsius would be 37.7 recurring. I just want to move on to local and global variables as this is part of the syllabus. Now we've got two variables here, we've got x equaling 10 and y equaling 5. Now in terms of a global variable, these can be used by any part of the program. Its scope covers the whole program. But a local variable can only be used by the part of the program it has been declared in. Um, its scope is restricted to that part of the program. For example, y is in this particular function that's been declared, um, my function. So it can only work inside here. I'm going to run this in Python to show you um, just exactly how this works. Okay, for example, in this algorithm, the variable x is declared both locally and globally. Yep. Whereas y is only declared um, locally within the function. Okay, well, let's have a look at this in Python. So as I mentioned, x, the variable x, is outside of the function and y is inside the function. Now x and y can both be used within the function, but only x can be used outside of the function. Okay, so now when I run this, as you can see, inside the function the value of x is 10, of course it is. Inside the function the value of y is 5, but outside the function the value of x is still 10 and there's no value of y outside of the function. Okay, hope that makes sense. Okay, that is it for this video. I hope you've learned something from it, and um, I will see you next time. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.